Hello, I'm Christina Antonson. I'm Mark Eatonson. And I'm John Cornelius. And this is a thought cooperative presentation on narcissism, a psychodynamic perspective. We are including the references and footnotes underneath the video if you'd like to check them out. Lately, the word narcissism is popping up more often. As mental health professionals, we think it will be helpful to talk about what clinicians mean when they use this term. Narcissism is a broad term that describes how we feel about ourselves, how we deal with disappointments and criticisms, and how we go about getting our needs met by others. It occurs on a spectrum with healthy and adaptive self-esteem at one end, and something clinicians call severe narcissistic personality disorder on the other. Essentially, narcissism comes down to a person's sense of self. You might think of a sense of self as a place where you live. It can be a tranquil place, a comfortable place that feels positive and welcoming to others. It can be a less tranquil place, a place crowded with stuff a person doesn't need, neglected spaces, or parts that have fallen into disrepair. For some, it's barely even a space at all, offering hardly any shelter from the elements, structurally unsound, and in constant danger of collapsing in on itself. Healthy self-esteem is crucial to how we live our daily lives. It affects how we feel, our capacity to deal with challenges, and our ability to develop realistic expectations for ourselves and the world around us. Evidence indicates that when children are provided with safe, caring, and reliable relationships by role models who demonstrate effective ways to cope, they tend to develop a positive, stable, and resilient sense of themselves, a central element of healthy self-esteem. Throughout life, we use this stable foundation to build an adaptive, realistic sense of self. We rely on this capacity so much that it becomes a fundamental part of our personality. An adaptive sense of self allows us to develop stable, positive feelings about relationships. It gives us a sense of security about accomplishments. It helps us to handle criticisms in healthy, realistic, and productive ways. While these injuries can be intensely painful, healthy self-esteem helps us to examine these injuries in realistic and reasonable ways, to make fair assessments, acknowledge errors, and take responsibility when necessary. Healthy self-esteem also helps us to make reasonable arguments when we feel we are being misunderstood. These abilities allow us to weather storms and make repairs while engaging in an ongoing process of learning from our mistakes. Like a well-built house, a healthy sense of self needs a solid foundation and a good frame. Problems in a person's sense of self can be caused by issues or unmet needs that occurred during childhood, when the foundation and basic structure of their sense of self was being built. The resulting instability causes them to focus increasing amounts of effort to maintaining fragile self-esteem. Instead of solving problems and learning from them, individuals with an unstable sense of self may cope with challenges in dysfunctional ways. Unable to make realistic self-evaluations, they try to create and maintain an artificially positive image of themselves. This inflated self-image requires external validation from others, something clinicians call narcissistic supply. Like spackle and braces on a faulty wall, those with an unstable sense of self rely on narcissistic supply to shore up their sense of self. When these struggles begin to dominate a person's life and interfere in their daily functioning, clinicians say the individual has narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder, and personality disorders in general, are different from other types of mental health issues like depression and anxiety because they are related to how a person has developed through much of their early life. They impact a person's fundamental view of themselves and the world around them. Unlike many other mental health issues, personality disorders tend to persist throughout a person's life, regardless of what is happening around them. Narcissistic personality disorder is the part of the spectrum where the structural problems around a sense of self begin to dominate all aspects of a person's life. The entire personality is compromised, affecting everything a person thinks, says, and does. People with narcissistic personality disorder devote excessive amounts of time and energy to maintaining a fragile image of who they would like to be, rather than who they actually are. This idealized self-image may be so fragile that normal, everyday blows to self-esteem feel like severe threats that destabilize the individual's unstable sense of self. The more problems in a person's life, the more unrealistic this artificially positive self-image becomes, requiring ever-increasing amounts of time and energy to maintain. Clinicians call these unrealistically positive self-assessments grandiosity, or, at its extreme, megalomania. It's thought that individuals with narcissistic personality disorder use grandiosity to ward off deep feelings of emptiness and inferiority. The grandiose self-image requires constant infusions of narcissistic supply in the form of praise and admiration from others. Such praise may produce temporary feelings of euphoria. The problem is that this euphoric state is fundamentally unstable, and the person spends increasing amounts of time desperately chasing the euphoric feeling, trying to convince themselves and others of their greatness while simultaneously denying the realities of their problems. People with narcissistic personality disorder relate to others in inflexible and one-sided ways designed to extract narcissistic supply. 
Like a starving person desperate for food, those with this disorder can think of little else. The pressure to prop up their fragile sense of self shapes their entire definition of reality. Their hunger for praise and admiration makes such individuals susceptible to psychological manipulation. It also makes maintaining healthy relationships impossible, as those with narcissistic personality disorder tend to treat others as extensions of themselves or use them as objects to simply get what they want. They become so focused on their own needs that they make others feel invisible. Individuals with narcissistic personality disorder tend to attack those who disagree with them. Any criticism can be seen as a catastrophic threat. Unable to bear the anguish of being wrong, they go to great lengths to blame others for their own mistakes. They refuse to acknowledge difficult truths and oversimplify problems and people into unrealistic categories of all good or all bad. They often make decisions based only on the need to avoid injuries to their self-esteem. This mindset prevents those with narcissistic personality disorder from learning from their mistakes, causing pain for themselves and those around them. People with narcissistic personality disorder characteristically resist any reality that disrupts their artificially inflated sense of self. Severely disordered individuals function more in the realm of wishful thinking and fantasy than external reality. Such individuals may overtly deny reality in their struggle to insist on their artificially positive view of themselves and their accomplishments. There's an old myth that narcissistic personality disorder is untreatable. This idea originally came from the limitations of early psychoanalysis. In the latter half of the 20th century, new theories and techniques opened new horizons for treatment. It's true that narcissistic personality disorder is often difficult to treat, in part because admitting a need for help is often very difficult for those who rely on a grandiose self-image. Those with this disorder are frequently seen in mandated court-ordered forms of therapy where there may be considerable resistance. However, if a clinician can get buy-in for treatment from a person with narcissistic personality disorder, treatment can be effective. Such treatment usually takes a number of years to complete, as the person's sense of self must be gradually repaired while problematic psychological defenses and relationship patterns must be gradually confronted and changed. Such work is quite challenging and requires a great deal of patience and skill on the part of the therapist. People with personality disorders are unable to simply change their behaviors because they are stuck in problematic ways of thinking and relating. This doesn't mean that people with personality disorders aren't responsible for their actions or incapable of judging right from wrong, but they are also so entrenched in their own perspective that they struggle to fully consider other perspectives while very rapidly justifying their own. Having a personality disorder isn't a justification for behaving badly, but asking a person with a personality disorder to change is sort of like asking a French speaker to spontaneously speak Greek. They simply cannot do it without adequate treatment. We hope this video presentation helps to open up the conversation about narcissism from a psychodynamic perspective, recognizing that it runs on a spectrum from struggles with self-esteem to severe narcissistic personality disorder.